All right, what's up, GunTubers? Uh, next review is going to be on the Live Free Armory Apollo 11. <sighs> Where do I start? Okay, first of all, let me say, it has been 100% reliable, unsuppressed. Without a suppressor, runs great, okay? Have not had any malfunctions unsuppressed. Uh, I did fit it with a... It has a bull barrel in it, and uh, I did go ahead and fit it with a threaded barrel. Okay, it's a good-looking gun. Uh, it is a little dirty. We just got back from the range again. So, uh, it's a good-looking gun. I do have to say the gun has some styling points there. You know, it, it looks good. I put a Staccato Magwell on it. Okay, that's possible. And a Staccato Magazine. So, that does fit. It takes some fitting to do this. Uh, it takes quite a bit of filing to get this magazine well on the firearm. Uh, would I re recommend doing that only if you uh, are comfortable doing gunsmithing type modifying work? Uh, this grip is 3D printed, okay? And to me, it's it doesn't feel like it would be as strong uh, as just your standard polymer type grip on a staccato or a prodigy or a nice stalker ds you know like I, I just did a review on uh those grips to me feel a little bit more sturdy i guess you could say i mean i don't know i definitely wouldn't want to drop this one you know on something hard on this grip maybe i'm wrong i don't know you know if, i just feels to me like if you smack that with a hammer it's probably gonna shatter into a million pieces i don't know maybe it's really strong and uh it's nothing to worry about uh but i did file had to file that front lip because of the factory this factory plastic grip has a lip that comes out on the front and i did have to file that back to get this to fit down over it so it would pop up into place okay and it, it took quite a bit of filing up here to get that uh to work and just remember, you know, if you do that and you screw this up, you're going to have to order another grip module from them if you if you mess it up beyond repair. So, I uh, just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, I did put the EPS carry on it, and it seems to be a good match for it. Uh, it does co-witness right at the bottom, exactly the way I like it. It's like right at the bottom of the window. So the co-witness situation with this EPS carry on this Apollo 11 is perfect. This is exactly the way I like it. Just enough iron there to co-witness, but plenty of window to use your dot. The gun does shoot good unsuppressed. I have not had, like I said, I haven't had any trouble with it unsuppressed at all. And it does look good. It's a good-looking gun. You know, got some good serrations on the slide, some lightning cuts up here at the, at the end of the barrel. Um, you know, nice-looking trigger. And uh, the trigger is... It's okay. I mean, it's like I've said before. Um, a little bit of take-up. You know, it's probably around the four... I'm sure a four and a half pound range too, maybe close to four. It's not that bad at all. It's not a bad trigger. It's got a little bit of a spongy feel to it for a 2011 type of gun, but I think that has to do with what one of the things I don't like about the gun. It's the grip safety it's hard to defeat sometimes for me. Maybe it's just my grip because on my uh, strong hand grip, I normally don't grip the gun like 
real tight. The only other gun I've ever had this issue with was the little 380 by Browning. That's like a miniature 1911. You know, the grip was so small. It was like half the size of this one. It was just a small grip. I couldn't get the grip safety pushed without burying my finger in the trigger guard two knuckles deep. Uh, this one's not that bad, but it just seems to me like when I go to shoot the gun, I can feel the trigger snapping off that grip safety. Like I'm not, get, if you don't push that grip safety completely into the grip, then it will not defeat that safety. Like right now, I have a, I have a comfortable grip. My thumb's on the thumb safety over here. I've got a nice comfortable grip and I can't pull the trigger because with the grip that I have here, with my finger on the pad of the trigger like I normally do, and my hand is pushed against the grip here, and I'm squeezing, but it's not going off. You know, this is the comfortable grip for me, and it works on every other 2011 and 1911 I have, except for this one, and that little miniature one that I have. Um, it's just not releasing the grip safety. I have to really get dig my hand in there and make sure I get it pushed before the hammer will drop. So that's my first dislike about the gun. Uh, the other thing that I don't like about the gun is the safety is horrible. Oh my god, this uh, thumb safety is just awful. <clears throat> it's hard, hard to manipulate. And if you look at the it is ambidextrous, but and look at the play. Look at that. I'm holding it between these two fingers over here to keep it from moving. Boom. Yeah. Awful. Okay, so that's the other thing I don't like about it. The slide to frame fit, that's another thing I forgot to mention. The slide to frame fit is awful. Awful. No said about that. The only thing I can really give it points for is it looks cool. Okay? So it does look cool. Uh, like I've said earlier, shooting a suppressed, it, it did better. I got an Alaskan 360 Ti, which is feather light. That suppressor is unbelievably light. <clears throat> and I put that on here. It currently has a 12-pound spring in it. I'm going to drop it back down to a 10-pound uh, because that's the best performance I could get out of it with a suppressor is with a 10 pound spring it only malfunctioned twice the whole range trip with a 10 pound spring and a heavy suppressor uh, I put the 12 pound spring in it which seemed to increase the amount of malfunctions with the heavy suppressor when I took it out last time so I just wanted to see what it would do with the really really lightweight suppressor and with a 12 pound spring it did it did pretty good uh, but still not 100 percent still getting some malfunctions every now and then and it seems to be uh, you know like a stovepipe type of malfunction um, but it does lock back even with a 12 pound spring it will lock back after the last round uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the 10 pound back in it and try it again uh, with the light suppressor to see if I can eliminate it and get it running 100%. Um, I don't really like that. Uh, similar to, I was going to do a review video on the SIG P320s. Those, I have two of them. I have a P320 X5 Legion and a P320 X Full. And they're both basically the same gun. One's a little heavier, 
but anyway, I won't get into that now. I'll, I'll have to do another video on that and discuss that. But those guns will not run suppressed. Can't do it. I don't think it's possible. I have tried every single combination of spring and using the fat stainless guide rods and the whole nine yards. And it, this one kind of acts similar in the way that the malfunctions happen with a suppressor. And like I said, it's only with a suppressor. My P320s are 100% reliable, unsuppressed, no problem at all. And so is this one. This one, I have not had any, any malfunctions unsuppressed. But this one is similar to the P320s to where you throw a suppressor on the end of this thing and it just chokes. And no matter what pound spring or you know different things that you can do to try to solve the problem it doesn't seem to completely make it run 100 percent reliable uh, and that gets me because that's it this gun right here and my two sig p320s full-size p320s are the only three firearms out of the untold number of pistol hosts that i have and I have, you know, all brands makes models, Glocks, Sig, other Sigs, 1911s, and FN, you name it. You know, I've got a lot of different pistol hosts. All of them have run right out of the box from the factory, you know, with maybe some small modifications that I've done with changing the trigger or do, putting a mag well or whatever, uh, optics and stuff like that. All of them that I have out of the many many pistol hosts that I have have all run 100% with a suppressor without any modifications to make it run with a suppressor uh, all of my 1911s all of my 2011s all of my striker fire guns everything all of them have run 100% with no problems with, a, with heavy suppressors light suppressors it don't matter with a suppressor on it they run fine no issues at all but yet this Apollo 11 and my two SIG P320s absolutely will not run reliably with a suppressor on the end of them don't know I wish somebody could tell me what the answer to that question is because I have not gotten it yet I'm still working on it so still trying to figure it out uh, but that's the other the third drawback to it is to me that it will not run suppressed and I have tried multiple barrels okay I have done that I fitted multiple threaded barrels in here because I thought that it could have something to do with the barrel and I've tried multiple magazines different this one uh, like I said is actually a uh, staccato mag and with a staccato mag I put a staccato magwell on here it, it works perfect with the fitting um, so I have tried multiple mags and I've tried multiple threaded barrels in this gun and multiple spring weights like I said I'm gonna go back to a 10 pound spring and try it with the titanium suppressor the Alaskan 360 titanium version because it's really really light and we'll see what happens but I have yet to get this gun to run 100% reliably with a suppressor. It malfunctions um, several times a range trip, even with that light suppressor. I could not get it to uh, to go, you know, full two, three full magazines without a hiccup. So just keep that in mind if you plan on run it suppressed, which most of you might not. Uh, unsuppressed with the factory barrel and all that it, it's you know it runs good it's an accurate gun shoots good would I recommend it uh, you know if you want a 2011 for around a thousand dollars and you'd rather have this one because it looks cooler than say the Nisus the Tesis Night Stalker DS or I mean this one's you know four hundred dollars cheaper $500 cheaper somewhere around there than a prodigy maybe I mean you could probably find a prodigy for just a couple hundred dollars more than what you pay for this one um, 
would I take a Prodigy over this one right here? Yeah, I would. I would take my Prodigy over this any day of the week because the Prodigy just seems to be a much more solid firearm than this one. Uh, I mean, the this gun is not even in the same league with the Platypus. I can tell you that right now. It's not even close to a Platypus. Um, it's not as good as a Prodigy. It's not as good as the Night, the Night Stalker. Basically the same thing. It just doesn't look, you know, the Night Stalker doesn't look as good as the Apollo 11. The Apollo 11 has got some, got some cool lines to it with the serrations on the slide and, and, uh, the two-tone, I think, I like it. You know, I do like the way it looks. I just wish that it would shoot as good as this one. If this one shot as good as this one, man, I'd be all over it. I'm telling you, buy them, buy them, buy them. But which one would I take between these two? I would take this one right here all day long. The Tesis, uh, the Night Stalker DS is a better firearm, in my opinion. They're about the same price. I mean, I would recommend it if you just like the way it looks. If you like the way it looks, you're going to get a decent $1,000 2011 style gun that will shoot. And I'm sure it'll be 100% with the factory barrel. You, you know, as long as you don't, even if you put a thread barrel in it, as long as you don't put any weight on the end of the barrel, you'll be fine. Um, as soon as you throw the suppressor on the end of this is when it chokes, just like a P320. So you can find budget 2011 pistols about the same price as this one uh, that in my opinion are way better they may not look as good but I think they're built in a, at a better quality level and probably have better parts in them but like I said again I must say it again it has been 100% reliable with no suppressor on it and I know that my reviews steer toward the shooting suppress thing a lot and a lot of you may have no interest and don't care about that uh, that's just something that you know I, I do care I want to be able to fit a different barrel or you know customize the gun and still have it function and I have not had any issues I have fitted a lot of threaded barrels bought a lot of threaded barrels for, for different firearms and all of them have worked fine except for just a couple, this one and my two SIG P320s. So you can find a 2011 style pistol at about the same price as this one that is going to be better. It's gonna have better parts in it, it's gonna be built better quality, build, uh, but it's not gonna look as cool. I mean, this gun does have some style points, like I said. If you want a gun that looks really cool, but it may have some cheaper parts in it. it. May not be built with as you know high of quality as some of the other ones, but it'll still function 100%. Then this is the gun for you. Um, I mean, I enjoy shooting it. Is I just I don't enjoy the fact that I have to you know put a death grip on it here to get the grip safety to uh, disengage. But it shoots good. I mean, it, it is a good shooting gun. It's just got some things that uh, I don't like about it that I've discussed. And I will probably customize the gun. Uh, get rid of this sloppy safety and do some work on this grip safety to fix the problem. But this, in my opinion, this ambidextrous safety having that much, that should have never come out of the factory. That should have never come out, left their, their property right there. They should have had this fixed before it got shipped out. Because uh, that's ridiculous. The amount of slop in that safety is ridiculous. But it's okay. I mean, it's an okay gun. Would I recommend it? Like I said, you know, if you're looking for a budget 2011 and you don't really care about the fit of the gun as much, as long as it runs 100%, which it has, but you don't really care about some of the fitment of the parts, uh, then yeah, I would. It's a it's a budget 2011, and it shoots good. I mean, it does shoot good. You can defeat that grip safety. 
then it, it's a good shooter. But uh, I was a little disappointed. I was expecting a little more. But anyway, that's about it. That's my thoughts on the Apollo 11. It's an okay budget um, 2011 style pistol with okay fitment. Uh, the finish is good. You know, no problem with the finish that I can see, but the parts fitment, eh, it's okay. And uh, she's okay. She's good. But that's about it. We'll see you in the next one.